Money problems can seem like they just come out of nowhere. So hopefully these 20 money tips can help you uh, avoid some of these problems and actually have more money. Use a Chrome extension. Actually, there's a, a, about three of them, but they are amazing and have saved me a ton of money. We're gonna go through these real quick, but the first one is Honey. Honey is just an extension you can add to your browser and it will automatically look up discount codes whenever you go to buy something. I've saved hundreds of dollars doing this simply by applying codes that I wouldn't have otherwise known existed at checkout at different places. It's just like free money back, saves you a lot of time. Uh, with all of these, I'll leave a link down in the description. The second one it is a little bit less known, but it is called Pause. Pretty much when you go to any online store or to Amazon, anything like that, it makes you wait 30 seconds before you can start scrolling through stuff or before you check out. And having that little 30 second break can be the difference between buying something on an impulse and just deciding it's too annoying or rethinking it and not buying it at all. Again, this has saved me uh, a lot of time and money because honestly, it just makes like buying things on Amazon a little bit annoying, which is good because then I buy way less stuff on Amazon. The third one is Rakuten. I don't know how to pronounce it. This is pretty much a way to get cash back on almost everything that you buy online. You can go through their site, you can use their app, or you can have it as a Chrome extension. The average cash back per user last year was $63. So as long as you're not buying more stuff just because you're getting cash back, this is an amazing tool. Again, I'm gonna link all of these down in the description. Now, as long as you're at your computer, unsubscribe to a, a bunch of different stuff, whether that's emails that are always trying to sell you something, influencers and brands on Instagram, Instagram or other social medias that make you impulse buy, or even like if you haven't used Netflix in the past month, go through and see what you can unsubscribe, purge once for five minutes and you'll see a ton less stuff in the future and hopefully that will save you money. Sell something on Facebook Marketplace. This is super addictive. I have made over, I would say $1,000 selling stuff around my house on Facebook Marketplace. I've also made a lot more like flipping stuff on there. But that's not really the point, but you can take a few minutes, go around your house, find something that you don't use anymore or you've been meaning to get rid of and just list it on Facebook Marketplace. Make that a habit. For me, it's the best place to sell over Craigslist or anything like that. Uh, but wherever you wanna list it. You do that once, you sell it, that thing's gone forever, it's one less thing to worry about, and you actually have money in your hand that you can start using for other more useful things than just having more stuff. Look through your credit card statement. If you take the literally five minutes and go through and look at everything you bought in the past month, Honestly, you're probably gonna be rather shocked that you bought things on Amazon 20 out of the 30 days and you went to the grocery store four times a week and you have a subscription to HBO that you haven't used in a year and a half. There's so many different habits that we have and things that we don't notice that really add up to be an insane amount of money. So just taking a, a minute and looking through your last credit card statement can really uh, be a, a shocking experience and really help you get a hold of some of your spending issues and some of your habits that you didn't even know that you were doing. Now, I know I just mentioned unsubscribing from stuff, but you can also subscribe to certain things. Uh, I know that I subscribe to certain podcasts and, and YouTube channels, don't forget to subscribe. And even people on social media like Instagram. And following those people and kind of making them almost like my mentors really changed my mindset dramatically, going from kind of a toxic, entertaining, just random flashy people that I was following and listening to and watching to people who actually motivated me and I learned things from and inspired me. And it all came from just making a few decisions on what type of content I want to consume. This one's a little more serious and that is to diversify your investments and kind of hedge against inflation. Now diversifying in 2022 can be a daunting task, especially with a lot of stocks like majorly losing this year. And that's why institutions and some of the biggest financial guys in the world are diversifying by putting anywhere from 30 to 50% of their assets into alternatives. They see these alternative investments as a way to shelter themselves from high volatility and like skyrocketing interest rates. As an asset, fine art has out 
outpaced the S&P 500 for 26 years. And that was with the booming market of the last decade. So imagine how impressive it's gonna be over the next 10 years. And that's actually why I partnered with the only alternative platform that has already delivered an average of 29% net returns to their investors, Masterworks. Even last month, Masterworks sold another painting for a 33% return, even when the S&P 500 was down 20%. The performance of Masterworks investments, coupled with new guidance, has led Masterworks to release more art on their platform to meet the demand, and there is actually a wait list for this. But if you use the link in the description, you can actually skip the wait list. If this is something that I started investing into myself, I think it's a great opportunity. Anyways, the link's down in the description, so we'll go on to the next Next point. Plan some grab and go food. Just spending $10 every work day on food instead of bringing your own and, and being prepared can cost you over $2,600 per year. And that's just if you're maybe getting lunch, if you add in getting coffee every day, going out to dinner a couple times a week, maybe a little bit better, more expensive lunch, then, then you're talking a, a lot more than that. But just meal planning and always having stuff that you can pull from the freezer or just eat or having leftovers or just some type of plan taking the one or two minutes in the morning to bring something as opposed to having to go out on your lunch break or get it at work can make an enormous difference when you compound that out over a year and then like over 10 years. It's just, it, it's crazy amount of money. The seven day rule. Of course you can also use the 30 day rule, but uh, it depends on what you're into. This is just the idea of before you buy something, especially online or at the store, write it down somewhere, anywhere, and let it sit for seven or 30 days. If you come back and you still want that thing after seven or 30 days, then you can go ahead and buy it. You don't even have to worry about it, but you'll find if you're anything like me that like 80% of the stuff you totally forgot about like a day later and definitely a week later, you're like, oh, I didn't need that thing after all. So this can save you a lot of money. It's a great habit to stop buying more stuff. And most likely if you've survived your entire life without having this thing before, you can survive a another week before buying it if it's not like food or something like that. How long can you survive without eating? Anyways, you're gonna make it. Set a five minute timer. Honestly, uh, this is something that I do every once in a while. It's super helpful. You just set a five minute timer and then sit there and, and come up with one financial goal that you want to achieve in the next three months. And actually like write it down on physical piece of paper. For me, I use uh, this journal. A lot of you guys have been asking what it is. It's a finisher's journal. There's a link down below. You can use any journal though. It is an affiliate link, but it's what I've been using for like two years now, like every single day. Uh, I'll, I'll take the time and I'll write down like, what is my goal that I want to achieve in the next 30 days? The one I came up with was reaching half a million subscribers by the end of the year. And if I could do that, I was going to do a $10,000 giveaway on this channel, along with finally being able to get a Tesla. Yours don't have to be that extreme though. It can be getting out of debt, saving up a certain amount for an emergency fund. And then every day for a few seconds, come back to it and write down what is that one thing you're going to do today that will get you one step closer to that goal. If you do that for 90 days, you're going to be way closer to that goal than if you got excited about it for a week and then you totally forget about it. So once this is over, just take five minutes, shut off your phone and think about what is the one singular financial goal that I want to achieve in the next 90 days. Track everything for one week. For me, when I do this, I like to do it uh, with using cash or a notebook and physically writing down every single time I spend money inside of a week. This is kind of like looking at your statement at the end of the month, except you're doing it in real time and it makes a much bigger impact when you're actually using cash or actually writing down that I just spent $5 on a coffee. You see that over and over and over again as you're going through it and you become a lot more conscious of how you're spending your money. And maybe going along with that, you can also calculate your true income. Honestly, you don't need to get super in depth on this. You can just back up napkin math this, but we're trying to find out how much we're actually earning. So what are all your job related expenses? And maybe write those down on a piece of paper. You have your car, clothes that you need, the time driving to and from work, maybe stress related sick days, the hour of TV that you need to watch to unwind every night, uniform, shoes, whatever it is, write all that down and minus that from what you're actually making. And you might realize that you're making a lot less than you think and you don't need to earn as much to switch to a different job that's either a lot closer to you that you can maybe walk to and you wouldn't need that car or you wouldn't at least have all those expenses or a work from home job that could be a lot less. To start off with, you need to know what you're starting off with. 
Invest two ways. The first way is into yourself. If there's a book you've been thinking about or a course or even just time and energy listening to a podcast or watching a YouTube video, spend that and make it a habit to invest into yourself because that's gonna be the best ROI you can have. If you spend a hundred bucks on a course or a couple books and you learn a skill that lets you double your income, that's gonna be a lot more efficient than spending that same hundred bucks investing and earning 10% on it. Won't really matter. But on that note, take 20 or 50 bucks and just invest into the stock market. It doesn't have to be life-changing money, but you can use an app like Webull and they'll actually give you up to, I think it's 12 free stocks when you sign up and fund an account. So you're starting off with like some free money right there and just start to watch what happens. You can start to learn some lessons very cheaply that you don't want to try to beat the market you just wanna be in it for a long time and you'll start to get motivated when you see over the course of five years that money has been going up. Or maybe you'll start to understand that things drop and you don't wanna sell when they drop, you need to wait them out and kind of think long term. So just investing a little bit to kind of start to understand uh, the stock market, I guess. If you guys wanna check out Webull, uh, there's a link in the description, you can get up to 12 free stocks. It's literally free money. These next four points are actually from you guys. Use the 10 second rule. Think of what you want to buy. If you don't need that thing, then invest that money straight away. So you did spend the money and you actually spent it a lot wiser. I think that is a great way to kind of trick yourself into investing. And you can always pull that money back out if you need to. Have your groceries delivered. Uh, at first it does cost something, but once you go through your pantry, fridge and freezer, while shopping and you can see the total before checkout and it's easier to remove things without having to go back. This is actually something we've been doing for a, a while now. We don't do it all the time, but if we can spend a few dollars to have something delivered or spend an hour and a half on a big grocery trip, it's totally worth it to just buy it on the app and have it delivered or pick it up. That way you don't impulse buy as you're walking around the store. You get to shop your own house first and see exactly what you have. And for us at least, even though it does cost money, it actually saves us a, a, a decent amount of money when we do do it. When you need something, shop at home first. 70% of the time you already have what you need. Before we get into the next one, if you guys have any other tips, I would love to hear them. I'm always trying to learn and improve my finances. So comment down below. Eat less. A good portion of our paycheck goes towards food and food waste is a big problem in America. It, it really is. And when you're throwing away food, you're literally throwing away money. This is that, That's always what I think about when I like empty something that I forgot to eat. Plus investing in good, healthy food is like preventative maintenance for long-term medical bills down the road. Now, the last thing you could do is subscribe. It takes a second. It's free. Also check out Masterworks with the link down in the description and I'll see you next week.